Hey guys, got another uh, repair for you here. This is a charge cable problem on a Mag, Apple MacBook uh, MagSafe charger. And the problem here is that the, the connector itself ha has gone, so we're going to have to replace it. And I'm going to show you how you can replace just this cable and not have to replace the entire MagSafe unit. This particular one um, was one I replaced a, a while ago, and it uh, maybe three or four years ago, and it's gone again. I don't know if I can show you here, but it, you know, it, it cracked and some of the material that was inside uh, began to ooze out. This greenish color material that you see is copper oxide, um, where it's corroding inside the copper electrical contacts. So over time, heat from multiple charge cycles causes that. So how do we do the repair? Well, you're gonna have to hop onto eBay. There's, there's two kinds of these, right? There's a, there's a MagSafe Series 1, and this is a MagSafe Series 2. Um, but the repair be the same regardless of which one you have. Um, and, you, and you can see over time, you know, these guys, they first start turning yellow from heat, and eventually they'll get like this. Another problem that happens with them is the little pins that are inside here. If you can see these little pins, they, they push in and out. And the springs can give out on these, and they don't make full contact anymore with the magnetic connector. But either way, you can replace this actual cable from the unit and, and salvage this and reuse it. You hop onto eBay and you can find a lot of sellers selling these. These are Chinese knockoffs, but you know, how do you screw up a cable, right? I mean, it's just a two-wire cable, a magnetic head on it, and then it's got the four spring-loaded contact pins. It's hard to screw it up. So it's a pretty good deal. I've done it a few times in the past. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to crack um, this casing open. We're going to remove the uh, adapter piece to get it out of our way. And since I said I've done this one before, it might be a, a little bit easier uh, what I'm doing, but the procedure would be the same. You're going to find a place along the seam where you can get a tool like this. You can use like a butter knife. This is just a, you know, like a spudger tool, something that's not sharp because if you slip, you don't want to cut yourself. And you want to get it in here where you can begin to kind of separate these two pieces apart, right? And they're glued together from the factory. And like I said, even though I've done this one before and it, it's going to come apart a little bit easier, um, these little guys are just to, to hold your cables. They come right off. It would be the same if I was doing one for the first time, same kind of procedure. I'm just going to get it to separate all the way around. And the very first time you do this, it's, it takes a lot more force than the second time where I've done it before and I've crazy glued it together. And inside, I want to remember where all these guys go. Just take note of that. So let me point that out to you, right? There's a little spring loaded piece right here. It's going to come out when we take that apart. It's going to be just like the one on the other side. And it's going to slip underneath that piece there. So when we put it back together, we're going to put it back together the same way. We'll take this one off on the other side. Nice and slow. All right. Let me peel this other piece off. This is basically your transformer. So it converts the electricity coming out of your wall to what's needed by the logic board on the Mac. All right. All right, so what you're going to see, we're going to see inside here, I'm going to go back to the, the new one to compare for you. Take it out of this package. All we're going to be really doing for this repair is we're going to be soldering, we're going to be desoldering rather, um, the two connections that are already there, and we're going to be soldering in the new one. That's all we're really going to be doing. So it's just a matter of getting this guy worked out so that we can access him enough to do that. So I've got him loosened up enough that I feel like I can, I can work around him. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work on removing this copper plate that's here on the way here. Because what we want to be able to do is get underneath to the circuit board and lift it up so that we can desolder these two wires, solder on the new ones, and then reassemble the whole works. Okay. So part of doing that is I'm going to have to desolder this copper plate here so I can get it to lift off. So I'm going to pause the video for a second, get my soldering station set up, and I'll show you that. Okay, piece. so let's get started here. So there's a piece of uh, you know Kevlon tape that's a, kind of like an anti-heat tape. We're going to peel this 
off from here, and you may have to you know, use an X-Acto knife to get it to lift off for the first time. Get that out of the way. And then what we're going to need to do is there's a, there's, a, there's a ground line for this copper plating that we're going to have to desolder out of the way so we can lift this guy up. So we're going to do that next. And because this big copper plate acts as a huge heat sink, so it might take a while to get heated up enough to melt, unfortunately. That's just how it's going to be. Put a little bit more heat on the iron here, and then there we go. Gotta be patient because what we're gonna tr need to do here is we're gonna have to get this where we can lift it up. And in order to lift it up, we've got to break this solder connection. So it's finally, finally liquefying a little bit here. And again, you got this huge, huge piece of copper wrapped around this whole assembly. So it's just like a huge heat sink. Makes it very difficult. All right, so while I've got this guy kind of liquefied. I'm going to go in here and try to get this ground wire out of the way. There we go. All right. So I got this guy off and then we're going to push him. He's in a little tab here. I'm just going to kind of work him out of the tab like that and lift him up and out of the way. And with him up and out of the way, this plastic piece will come up like this. And there we go. So now what we're after, we're after desoldering this piece, this piece, and this piece. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, to make it easier to film, I'm going to pause this for a second and get something to get these guys to stay out of the way. And then we'll show you the next two steps. And then that's the last piece. And then we start with putting the new one on and reversing it. I've got this copper bent out of the way so you can hopefully see some more. I'm going to use my desoldering iron now. And again, you know, we're just going to move these two wires. Heat this guy up and get this guy here. There's not a whole lot of solder on them, but the more you can get off, the easier it'll be to pull it out. I'm also trying to push it down a little bit as I melt it. It might be easier to remove later. Okay. And what I'm going to try to do after I get as much as I can this way so we'll use the regular soldering iron to kind of finish it off. All right, let's set this guy aside. On a little holder. And let's see what I got here. So I'm going to take you know take note of what you got where the the black is on the front of the board and the white's on the back. You know, and in case Apple has changed this, you know, just take take note of how yours is. I got this loose, but I'm still going to need to use regular iron to finish it off, to get it to come off. And again, what we're doing here, I'm trying not to, to do it the, the way where I don't have to take the thing completely apart. I just want to get in here enough to get this off. you got a lot of surface mount stuff nearby, so you want to be careful that you don't disturb any of that. Got the first one off. Twist them out of the way here. And then we're going to do the back one that we kind of pushed through with the desoldering iron, but we didn't get them to go all the way. Okay, got them both off. And we're going to take the new one. Again, we're going to go white in the back, black in the front. When you buy these things, Get them from a reasonably reputable reseller. They'll be pre-tinned. 
and ready to go. I'm going to do this one of the back first. Get him up here where he doesn't fall out of the way. Retin the iron here. Pull him down just a little bit so we don't get the insulation in what we're doing. And we're going to attack him down. And then, with him held in part way, we can work black lead in, do the same thing. Again, you see me pushing it down a little bit. It's just because I want to make sure I'm not letting the insulation work up here because this replacement is a little bit smaller than the one that was on there before. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit more back here. Soldering wise, this is just straight up easy soldering because it's just wire. It's not a component. You don't have to worry about the heat too much. I'm running my iron at 350 degrees Fahrenheit right now. It varies from iron to iron. Probably a good temperature for just about anybody. All right, get this in here, kind of get him sit in the stress relief cutout. I'm going to fold this copper back down, and then if you guys remember, there's this little ground wire that we desoldered before. We want to work him back into the little notch in the white plastic that he goes into. I'm just going to kind of give the copper a pinch here. Get our Kaplan tape back out of the way. Bring this next piece back down. And get it to slip back into the notch. And if it doesn't fit, it's because you know we've we've bent and, and distorted some of this stuff, so it's not quite the same position it was before. Again, you just got to be a little patient with it. Flattening it back down, getting it to fit where you want it. Get the tape to hold it down long enough to resolder that ground wire, and that'll keep it into position. All right, let's see if we've got this where we wanted it. Not quite. Wonder why we're having some trouble here is that the ground wire is bending up a little bit trying to get him to go back where he was just so he can make contact with this upper copper area and we can resolder it there it goes all right all right so can't really do this one-handed I'm going to go grab something I can use to Kind of hold this in place so I can resolder that, and then we'll move back to putting it back together. All right, so uh, I ended up having to, um, <laughs> I ended up not being able to do the camera and do this at the same time. I got some uh, Kaplan tape and and held this down so I could resolder this this ground lead that we were talking about before. Um, it just it worked out pretty good to do that. I mean, obviously you got to get something that um, be able to take the heat. Not going to be able to throw a rubber band on there, for example. Let me get this off. that away. Okay, we just leave the one piece that Apple had on there right here. All right, you know, so we make sure we got this guy sitting back inside the way he was. And then we got our stress relief seated. And then on the top piece here, uh, remember we talked about getting these spring clamps and side pieces back in before we try to reassemble it. So they, they fit in a recessed area, so make sure they're in all the way. And then we're going to insert these cable reliefs on both sides, doesn't matter which, and then we're going to test fit the 
we have this back the way it's supposed to be. Just try to keep your fingers holding these guys together as you work them back. You got to remember, these, this was not, Apple never intended for this item to be disassembled. So the very first time you're getting it apart, it's super, super hard to separate. I've had ones where I've had to um, literally just prise them apart, and I've had the plastic break in some cases. But if you go careful, you should be able to avoid that outcome. I got the left side going in good, but I've got something sticking here on the right side. There it goes. All right, so once I'm kind of sure that everything is fitting right on those ends, I just got to see what's what's in my way over here. The only thing you're going to have to do then is get some crazy glue on it and get some clamps on it to hold it together. All right, so you can see we just got something wedged up here. Can't quite figure out what it is. You take it apart, figure out what that is, and, and come back to resealing it. I found out what this was. Sorry about that, guys. Um, on this side here. When you're putting these little pieces in, they, they have to fit in this recess. You see that sitting in that recess there? You can see the little gap. They've got to fit in there. You won't ever be able to close both pieces of the clamshell. So bef again, before we do the glue also, I'm checking to make sure these stress reliefs are working properly. Before we glue it back together and then another tip I'll show you after you get it all glued back together is um, when you're storing this because another problem that happens with these cables is they fray at the stress relief and the whole point of this you know it's a little tip I learned at a, from a genius bar one time you just take this guy in like this loop him and then you start wrapping it around and that way leaving that little loop in there provides some stress relief um, on the stress relief, literally. Prevents that piece from fraying on that side. And then you can use a little clip to hold it. Take this little guy, it's just a cover, shipping cover off. All right, so the last thing we gotta do is run crazy glue all around the edge. Put this guy in a vise overnight, and then be able to test him in the morning. Make sure you get a green light when there's no charge, an amber light when it's charging. But that's it, it's, um, it's a little bit of a harder repair, uh, mostly because of having to get this case opened. And again, like I say, this one I've, I've done before a few years ago, so it wasn't so bad. You can see, you know, where when I originally did this years ago, there's still a gap here where I came in here. I ended up having to actually literally take a flathead screwdriver and just tap in here to initially break the seam so I could finally start getting these pieces to separate from the factory gluing. But it can be done, and it saves you a lot of money, and it'll get you a few more years on your MagSafe charger. I hope this video helps you out. Thanks for watching.